Welcome to today's GNCC Small Business Workshop, the last session of our four-part series powered by Meridian Credit Union. My name is Mishka Balsam and I will be your moderator for the next 90 minutes. This pandemic has impacted corporate partnerships, challenged existing business model, and accelerated the need for business to access grants and resources to allow their operations to stay afloat and to transform their operations in an effort to meet the demands of customers and business partners, as well as staff. Organizations are working hard to ensure business continuity by boldly adjusting their strategies and approaches. But all of these decisions, along with the economic uncertainty, come with an equally long list of questions. To address some of them, we are fortunate to be joined this morning by an amazing group of experts on assessing, accessing grants and resources. But before getting into this important topic, let me turn the screen over to MNP, a leading national accounting, tax and business consulting firm for their introductory message. At MNP, we understand the personal stake riding on your success, the consequences of every decision, the financial and emotional costs, the economic challenges. It's about everything you have invested a lifetime to build. At MNP, we're here to help local businesses navigate through challenges and find their way forward. Because in times like this, it helps to have an advisor who really gets what's on the line. Our local expertise, along with a diverse suite of services, are here to help you manage every aspect of your organization. We are focused on helping small to medium-sized businesses in the greater Niagara region succeed. And as proud members of the community, we support local organizations who are committed to creating positive change. MMP is proud to partner with the Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce. Thank you very much to MNP and thank you very much for the partnership. And our partners during the Small Business Month throughout the month has been Meridian Credit Union. Meridian Credit Union is Canada's second largest credit union of 92 locations across Ontario and 12 commercial banking centers managing over 24 billion in assets serving just under 400,000 members, including over 25,000 small business members. Last year, Meridian Credit Union expanded the offerings across Canada through the launch of Modus Bank, a fully digital national bank with members across Canada. And joining us from Meridian Credit Union is Christine Decker, Small Business Advisor. Christine, over to you. Thanks, Mishka. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself today. I'm Christine Decker, and I'm one of nine small business advisors in the Niagara region for Meridian Credit Union. I've been with Meridian for over 18 years and I've gone through many roles, but for the last six years, I've been dedicated to business banking. Each of us have different backgrounds, some like me growing through the credit union and others coming from having owned their own businesses before. We live where we work and we're proud to be part of our local community supporting our members. We partner with our business owners and their team of professionals to help grow their business while delivering superior personalized service. We also believe in giving back to the communities we live in through donating 4% of our pre-tax profits, supporting webinars for business owners like today with GNCC, and supporting Niagara Shop Local, a local Facebook group to promote our local businesses. So we would love to have a chat with you. Feel free to reach out to us anytime. Thanks. Megan and I worked together in Calgary, Alberta, and we dreamt about opening a studio and bringing it to Ontario. So we shifted gears and moved out here. One of our first steps to opening our fitness center was to get a loan. The game was to drop off the idea to four or five different competitive banks and lenders, but then when we met with Meridian, they wanted to build a strong community, and that was exactly our vision. Our business advisor let us know going into the meeting that we had to sell our story. They were so different than what we expected, hands-on, super friendly, listened to us and heard back from them within a couple days. The turnaround had to happen because we need to be open by January. That is our month in fitness. fitness. Yeah, we needed to crush it for January line. and they were completely on our side of getting that done. No waiting. <laughs> <laughs> they also gave us credit cards 
seamless, like here's your credit card, here's yours, what do you need to be successful? And now we've talked to them about opening our second location and they're, let's do this. It was the, the perfect, perfect fit. fit. Yeah. Come to Meridian to tell your business story. Thank you so very much. Uh, thank you to you, Christine, for being with us this morning and especially uh, to all of your colleagues at Meridian Credit Union uh, for making a webinar and a webinar series like we've had throughout October Small Business Months possible. So all of our thanks to you. Uh, and now let me introduce today's panel of experts. Diana Delia is the Director of Employment and Immigrant Services for the YMCA of Niagara and has been serving the community for over 28 years. One of her critical segments of her portfolio is working with businesses to help them find creative solutions to their staffing and training needs. And Noah Kalp joined Innovate Niagara at its inception in 2011. Innovate Niagara is a not-for-profit private corporation which delivers programs at no cost to entrepreneurs with leading edge ideas to help them start and grow and to succeed. As Director of Operations, Nora is committed to bringing valuable services to innovative entrepreneurs to give them a huge boost to getting their businesses off the ground or get their businesses to the next level. Nora is proud to be a member of the GNCC's WIN, the Women in Naga Council, and the Naga Region Council's Women Advisory Committee. And Volker Lutfring. Volker is business, the business loans officer at Venture Naga, which provides small business financing and advisory services. His professional background includes banker, sales and marketing manager, and international business development professional. He has worked in various industry verticals throughout his career, including manufacturing, distribution, retail, information technology, nonprofit, market research, and financing. And Rob Belcher. Rob enjoys working with small businesses and entrepreneurs on a daily basis. During the past 10 years, Rob has met thousands of aspiring startups through this work with the Hamilton Business Center and now at the, NAG, at the St. Catharines Enterprise Center. In addition to consulting with small businesses and startups, Rob has started a few businesses of his own and grew up in a family business environment. And Christine Bukovic. Christine is a service delivery manager with the Ministry of Labor, Training and Skills Development, overseeing employment, training and skills development program and projects across the Hamilton, Naga, Brand, Haldeman and Norfolk communities. She has collaborated with various organizations, employers, and all levels of government to develop and lead workforce development projects that meet the needs of employers, job seekers, and the community. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for being with us this morning. And uh, to all the attendees, thank you very much for joining us. Just about today's um, format, uh, we're going to maximize the technology that we have at our hands uh, through Zoom. We are hoping this session to be a very interactive session of questions and answers. So please throw as many questions our way uh, as you can. There's two ways that you can do it. Some of you have already either texted us or via social media uh, or via email have provided us with some of the questions you would like us to address. The other options that you have here this morning is the raise hand function on Zoom. It is the best way to ensure that you have your say uh, at any time. What we will see here on our end, the panelists uh, will see that you have raised your hand and we will give you a chance, we'll unmute you and it allows you to ask your question live. And the second option is there is something called a chat function and you can type in any kind of questions, suggestions or ideas that you have and we can see it on our end and we'll try to address it as well. So thank you to everyone for being here. And on that note, um, I am going to pass this over to the panelists. And, and I thought maybe one really good way to start out with is giving each of you uh, a minute or two to just introduce your organization, maybe the target audience, if there is a geographic footprint of where you're covering uh, that is part of your mandate, but something that would allow all of our participants to get a little bit of a better idea of your organization. And maybe to start out with, if I can ask Rob, do you want to go first? You're the closest on my screen. <laughs> sure thing. It would be my uh, it would be my pleasure. Uh, thank you, uh, Mishka. Thank you to uh, to everybody that helped to put to put this together. Um, 
so briefly with respect to the uh, St. Catharines Enterprise Centre, a brief introduction about us. Um, the St. Catharines Enterprise Centre, we're part of the City of St. Catharines, so I am an employee of the City of St. Catharines within the Economic Development Department. Uh, but we deliver Province of Ontario programming on behalf of the Ministry of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. And we're one of 47 offices across Ontario that do similar work. Um, our office is focused on serving Niagara in cooperation with the Niagara Falls Small Business Enterprise Centre. So they're one of the other 47 offices. And together we work with um, any small business most often at the startup phase, but pretty much any small business where they have questions, where they're at a new spot, uh, they need access to resources or guidance, uh, maybe looking for questions about funding, uh, or you, uh, quite often in development of a business plan. We offer coaching and guidance. We offer a lot of webinars and seminars. Uh, and, and we're just that go-to place that you can ask, uh, ask no dumb questions and, uh, and get, some, get pointed in the right direction. Uh, so like I say, we're here to serve all of Niagara. We are nestled uh, within the city of St. Catharines, uh, but we do invite uh, any small business owner to, uh, to reach out to our office. Thank you very Thank much, Rob. And I think it's really good for people to know that you serve all of Niagara, because I think that is really critical, because we often know, sometimes we're being asked that, um, if an organization only serves like Grimsby or Niagara Falls or certain areas. So it's really good to know. Um, and uh, next on my screen is Nora, actually. So over to you, Nora. Thank you, Mishka. Thanks. Um, I, um, thanks a lot for having me on this panel. And it's great to be with my fellow panelists. Um, I think it's it really shows that we have kind of a, an ecosystem in Niagara in terms of services that we all provide that are a little bit different. Um, and I think one thing to know if you can't remember what what we do versus what Rob does, it doesn't really matter where you come in through anybody. We're all kind of familiar and and refer people in the right direction. Um, so Innovate Niagara is a, what's known as a regional innovation center and we're one of 17 in the province. So it's similar to the enterprise centers um, as Rob was mentioning, but um, um, in terms of getting support through the, through the province. But our mandate is a little bit different in that we work with entrepreneurs and small businesses who have new innovations that they are looking to commercialize. So our focus is a little different in terms of understanding the market trends um, and um, where you can go and who your customers could be. Um, we are also a not-for-profit, so we do not charge for our services, uh, except in the good old days where we might have had a lunch and you have to you know, come up with something for your lunch. But um, typically it's always sort of uh, below cost uh, we're physically located in St. Catharines, but we do service all of the Niagara region. Right now, mostly through uh, remote, uh, we still do our business advisory services over Zoom. And we also have physical incubation space for tech startups to work in an environment where you're collaborating with like-minded uh, entrepreneurs. So that, that's a good overview to start. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nora. It's very helpful. And, uh, and next on my screen, Deanna, it's over to you. Good morning, everyone. Um, and uh, I too am, am happy to, uh, to be with everybody here today. Um, I work with the YMC of Niagara. I oversee our employment and immigrant services team. Uh, we serve Niagara region um, as a department and as an association, uh, but specific to today, we share um, the space um, for supporting employers with some other great providers throughout the Niagara region. Uh, the Y has three main offices for Employment Ontario uh, and Immigrant Services in Thorold, Niagara Falls and St. Catharines. Um, and we work in conjunction with the other Employment Ontario providers throughout Niagara which will come out uh, throughout our conversation today, um, as well as um, those who uh, support employers uh, throughout the province, um, whether we're working as Y Ontario group or as a Employment Ontario group. Um, we have a number of employers, small, medium and large, who may have shops in uh, different areas outside of Niagara. And so collectively, we do our best to serve them in the needs that meet their, their local labor market. 
Thank you so very much. A critical service to so many employers, and you're right, it goes from small to medium size to bigger businesses that you serve. So really nice having you with us this morning. And Falke, you are next. So thank you so much, Mishka, and the GNCC team to have me on the panel too. Very honored to be with everyone on this, uh, this panel. And yes, the, the WISE office is just across the street here in Thorold. So um, yeah, so we're located in Thorold uh, and Venture Niagara is known as a, what's called a Community Futures Development Corporation. So we're actually celebrating our 35th anniversary this year. Well, somewhat with COVID, we can't really um, have our AGM and things like that, but uh, maybe we'll do that next year. Um, we are part of uh, 267 offices across Canada. So the Community Futures uh, Development Corporations or CFTC program is uh, available only in the rural areas, not in the metropolitan areas in, in Canada. 60 of these offices are in, Tor in Ontario and 37 in uh, Southern Ontario. We cover all of the Niagara region besides West Lincoln. So Mishka, really good to say uh, what our geographic areas are. The West Lincoln area is actually serviced by the Grand Erie CFTC, which uh, is located in Cayuga. Um, we are also a nonprofit, so there is no um, fees for any applicants when it comes to loans with us. Um, and uh, we have a volunteer board. And besides the lending, we also provide community economic development projects. And we'll maybe talk a little bit about that later. But the main focus for us is small business lending. And uh, that is for startups or existing companies who not only want to expand, but also maintain their business. And especially during the COVID time, it's very important to maintain a portion. And there's a couple of programs which we provide, which I'll talk a little bit later about. Thank you so very much. Uh, and Polka, I appreciate your perspective of saying and that you're linked across Canada, uh, because I think that a lot of the organizations that are with us today are all linked actually to and have uh, partners in uh, either across Ontario or across Canada too. So it's really nice to see. Same goes to us as a chamber. We're part of the Ontario and the Canadian Chambers of Commerce as well. And it means often that we can access more resources than we might have if we only would be a local one. So it has and gives opportunities uh, for many entrepreneurs too in being able to link to other markets at the same time. And that leaves uh, me to pass mic over to Christine for her introductory comments. Good morning. Thank you uh, for, for having me today. I'm very excited to, to be part of this call. This is my first panel uh, representing the, the Ministry of Labor, Training and Skills Development. And so obviously here to, to represent the ministry. We are a fairly large uh, ministry spanning from um, looking at health and safety or employment standards uh, programs or initiatives to support employers across the province. Um, we also have a focus on supporting apprenticeships, the skilled trades, and looking at industry training and employment services in Ontario. So, so as the ministry, we do have a role in um, supporting different initiatives and providing funding to different organizations across the province. Um, as Misha or, uh, mentioned earlier, I'm a service delivery manager um, and I cover sort of the Hamilton, Brantford and Niagara region. Um, so we have local offices in, in each of those areas to support the delivery of our, our programs and work with our organizations who we fund to deliver many of our, our services and programs, um, such as the YMCA that uh, was mentioned earlier with one of our other panelists today. So in terms of some of our, our grants and programs, uh, we do, um, you know, I, I, as I mentioned, we do have the, the labor side of our ministry, but I am focused or more expertise in the employment and training um, division of our, our ministry. And what we focus on is, is supporting employers and workers um, who are interested in hiring and training for skilled trades and apprenticeship careers. Uh, we also help people prepare for higher education and employment through some of our adult learning programs. And the ministry is also uh, very focused on collecting and analyzing labor market data to, to, to report on uh, job trends in Ontario and looking at sort of where are the gaps um, in labor market issues, um, where there is a need for workforce uh, development, and, and sort of aligning our programs and funding um, based on labor market information. 
in many of our programs help employers hire and, and train employees, uh, whether it be through a specific program or a grant um, or various incentives that, that are available for access. Um, so, of course, uh, being a, a government and, and a ministry, we, we cover sort of on, you know, all of Ontario, uh, but we do have additional other programs um, in addition to, to some of the, the focus that I've mentioned, but we also have some labor market specific programs or workforce development that are, are really community focused um, and then driven by many uh, partners and organizations in the communities who come together to support um, employers and work with employers directly to, to see what their needs are in terms of their workforce development, uh, what skills are they looking for and, and helping to support um, doing some of that job matching um, with job seekers um, in the community. So we have some broad uh, programs, but we also have programs that are available that are more community specific. So I think I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really nice having you with us this morning. Um, so I thought maybe this is the best time. Let's get into the discussion. So we've had a, uh, as I had mentioned, we had a number of individuals who kind of have already reached out to us having some specific questions. And when we looked at them uh, over the last couple of days, one of the questions is really um, based and around e-commerce and digital marketing. And I thought maybe we'll start out on that, uh, from that aspect. When um, in March of this year, um, a lot of businesses had to, all businesses actually, close their doors had to rethink of how to reach their customers, had to rethink and how to connect with their markets, with their partners. And it really accelerated uh, the need for them to look at their digital presence and the e-commerce presence that is there. And during the governments, both the provincial and federal governments also recognized that that was something where maybe some businesses were lacking, were weaker in, um, and had a harder time to reach their consumers. And they offered certain programs and other things that are available now to businesses, established businesses and new businesses. And so I thought maybe we should start out on this end of it. And maybe Rob, if I pass it on to you and then likely on to Nora, maybe to take a lead to saying, what are some of those services that are available to people to really transform their business, especially when it comes to the e-commerce platform, to the digital needs that they have, things that they can tap into that might make it easier for them to conduct their business in the long term. Rob? Thank you, Mishka. Uh, you're, you're quite correct. There are um, a number of uh, digital transformation programs available right now, uh, available through Digital Main Street. And Digital Main Street uh, has been around for a little while now. It started um, in Toronto with business improvement areas and has grown over time. Uh, qu quite recently, the Government of Canada and the Province of Ontario just a few months ago uh, added a lot of support and funding to the Digital Main Street program. And they've been able to expand their offering in a way that will help more and more businesses. Um, one of the most accessible parts of their programming for pretty much any small business, and that's a business, a small business with less than 10 employees or for a restaurant less than 25 employees, and that's full-time employees. So if you have a small business with uh, less than 10 or in the case of a restaurant, 25 full-time employees, you could go to the Shop Here program with Digital Main Street and you can get help with developing a new website. You could get help with developing a website with e-commerce included, or let's say you were an artist or a health professional, a uh, hairstylist, anything where there might be bookings, uh, like cons consultants, for example. Uh, you can have a booking app set up on your website. And so the Shop Here program does this for free uh, in partnership with, uh, with some major sponsors like Shopify and Google Canada. And they develop that e-commerce enabled website or that booking enabled website uh, to a small business. So that's one of the most accessible uh, anywhere in Ontario can, can access that program. At the City of St. Catharines, in partnership with the Digital Main Street program, we have hired a digital service squad 
and they will serve um, small businesses with an emphasis on downtown uh, businesses, independent businesses, uh, but also into uh, they're trying to make uh, uh, efforts to help in Port Dalhousie and uh, Queenston Street uh, and, and really anywhere in, in St. Catharines they will offer service. Uh, but the digital service squads are there to offer one to one assistance to small businesses. So it could be things like coaching through how to set up Google My Business, how to how to handle social media. Uh, but anything, it doesn't have to be marketing related even, it can be anything digital. The, the digital service squad can be of assistance. So we have a squad here in St. Catharines. Other communities uh, are, have squads as well, such as Niagara Falls, Lincoln, Grimsby, uh, and several others in, uh, in the Niagara region have digital service squads that can help in that way. Uh, so it's hands-on support and guidance from, uh, from a trained marketing professional or digital professional. And then the third part of Digital Main Street is what's called Digital Transformation Grants. And these are targeted specifically to downtown commercial areas. Um, and uh, be, because it's come out of the Ontario Business Improvement Association uh, programming. And these digital transformation grants can help a business um, to improve their digital presence, um, whether it's a marketing presence or whether it's uh, tools like a CRM or a point of sale, things like that. Uh, they'll help uh, up to $2,500 for one of the businesses in the covered areas to improve their digital presence. So those are the three kind of core parts of Digital Main Street. And then there's been an exciting new add-on in the past few months, uh, which Innovate Niagara will be leading locally uh, called Future Proof. And uh, uh, I don't know if we want to turn it over to Nora for a second, just to mention Future Proof uh, at a very high level. But Nora, if I, if I understand correctly, Future Proof uh, um, is kind of a next level of support for uh, Ontario small businesses. Yeah, um, access from the same place, like digitalmainstreet.ca, you can see kind of an overview of, of all of all, all of that. And there's something called the transformation teams. And so this is kind of a deeper dive to um, future proof, they call it, um, your, your small business. So it is a, um, a team of like five um, digital kind of experts that work with you for a period of two to six weeks to really um, develop and, and um, um, bump up your, like your business models and processes. So, um, it, it, and it's really a matter of to access that going to digitalmainstreet.ca and there's, it's, it's very obvious how you put in your application and then um, it goes from there. Yeah, thank you so very much. Uh, there's a couple of questions that are coming in regarding this program and one of the ones is uh, for people to ac uh, access it, uh, is, do they need to have been in business for a certain period of time? Um, so if it's a brand new business, not really established, not having the track record, uh, can they access uh, digital um, Main Street uh, and or Future Proof? Uh, so Rob, Nora, whoever would like to address this. Um, yeah. Second thing is, is there a time limit to the program? Is this program available only for the next like six months or uh, a year or is it on, is it something that we are expecting to be ongoing? I'm glad you asked uh, both those questions. With respect to a time, uh, it, it is getting urgent. November 30th is the current deadline for the digital transformation grant. So I'm really glad that question came up because it's very important to apply. With respect to the age of the business, uh, I do not recall seeing that as a requirement for either the digital transformation grants and uh, certainly not for the shop here program as well where they'll set up a website. So it truly is a, a big boost. If I was starting a new business and I hadn't developed a website or I wasn't happy with my website, shop here would be a fantastic way to start. Yeah, and I, I, I know there's the funding for the um, digital experts and um, stuff goes until March 31st. So I think that they'll be delivering of, of the other services until then. And then who knows after March 31st. 
That's correct. And I'll add on uh, our digital service squad is with us until the until February at this stage of the game too. So we're hope we're hopeful and we're advocating like uh, at the economic development department. We're hopeful and advocating for uh, longer time periods. But but right now the programs are available, and I, I highly encourage anybody interested to check them out. Okay. I think this is really um, this is really helpful. There's a question from one of our participants uh, related to this one too. Uh, this is from Angela Brown from Brown and Associates Legal Services, and she's asking or looking for the replacement of computers to build in service and VPN. Also looking for ex grants to expand and move to a bigger office with video conferencing capacity and so on. But if you look at the first part of her question um, and looking at uh, is there anything when we're looking at someone is being set up technically, we're looking at a website, we're looking at other things that they're interested in. Does do any of the grants cover some of the hard costs that are there or do they mainly provide the expertise behind it? Are those parts that individuals or businesses are still responsible for on their own? And Ralph, um, yeah. Right. Uh I it's Sorry, more no. strategy. I would say this is more strategy to help you kind of lay out your plan. But in terms of hardware and that sort of thing, that's, you, you know, that's not covered under the program unless, Rob, you have any more insight to that. So for the 25, so there's a couple different programs yeah. through Digital Main Street. Uh, Shop here is certainly only for a website and getting online. Uh, for the digital transformation grant of up to 2,500, uh, I believe that's uh, that can be an ask in uh, in that 2,500 dollars. Uh, with respect to moving to larger quarters, uh, uh, depending what municipal, um, I recognize your name, but I'm not sure, 100% uh, sure, uh, depending on which municipality you're in, I'd encourage you to reach out to the local economic development office uh, just to see what kind of supports there might be in finding a new, uh, a new office as well. Mm -hmm. So just is, slide, and then I'm going to pass it on to Polka maybe on, on that end to see if there are some opportunities to venture to, to assist them as well. So when people are looking for assistance in upgrading their technology, their server, their computers, Rob, there is one aspect uh, where they can possibly apply through it, through uh, digital mainstream? The uh, digital transformation grant, yes. The transformation grant. And to get more information on that, um, I'll redirect them, Angela, to you. Am I right on this one? Is that the best place to move forward? Or can we um, maybe also just provide her a link maybe in the dialogue too? I can, uh, I, I can uh, reply to her with my email address and she could reach out for, for further, further info. Okay, that sounds great actually. Okay. Make sure uh, to do this uh, with and share our email addresses with all of our participants at the same time. But Angela, mm -hmm. thank you very much for asking the question. It's really helpful and understanding what specifically is covered by that service. Okay. Can I also mention, sorry, one other thing, Mishka, that on that site is also um, vendors. So it has a list of, of including local vendors in terms of if you're looking for help with your website. And um, if you are a local vendor, you can um, apply to put your information on there. So, um, you know, if you're someone here who provides services, again, go on Digital Main Street and you can put in uh, your information. Yeah, it's really helpful. Volker, I'm not sure if you can help us out or can help Angela out. This is the second part of her question. And there are, uh, her organization is exploring future larger quarters uh, in, uh, in offices in St. Catharines. Are there any grants uh, that are available to help uh, businesses scale up when it comes to just their physical presence? Um, not that I'm aware of. I don't think there's any grants for getting commercial um, space on the rental side or the purchasing side. It really comes to the, down to um, uh, a loan, a mortgage, right, uh, uh, to, to look at that. So uh, nothing I can or jumps to mind where there's any, any uh, financing or grants available for that. Yeah. Sorry. And only, the only thing I can think of right now is that uh, the federal government in partnership with the provincial government has offered some rent relief or commercial rent relief that people might be able to tap into. Uh, it has, the program has changed where it previously mm -hmm. 
have to go in conjunction with the landlord. It's now something that the tenants themselves can look at and it might be something that is worth exploring uh, as we're moving forward. But I, on the same note uh, of digital transformation, I want to bring in Christine and Diana into this conversation because um, they are offering, the ministry often offer workshops, skill development, uh, and other areas to even employers who might have staff uh, that needs to develop some of those skills related to actually developing someone's um, e-commerce and digital expertise. Uh, Deanna or Christine, either one of you, um, anything that uh, people could do by tapping into uh, your ministry or into the Y? And maybe Deanna, if I could ask you to take it first. Sure, um, thanks. So Christine has uh, alluded earlier to <clears throat> part of the portfolio, which is the Canada Ontario job grant is one of the things that, uh, and I believe as I see Mishka nod that she's referring to. Um, and uh, the, that specific program, well, not designed to serve uh, the single employer, um, more employees. Um, what we've been encouraging folks to do in terms of digital literacy, we've sat around many tables with Rob as of late, uh, and what we're encouraging them to do, if they have the capacity and a basic knowledge through their sta current staffing lens, is to encourage them um, beyond uh, what we're, we're sure to be short-term funding in terms of digital literacy and some of those uh, Main Street and some of those other ones, is to actually uh, increase the credentialing of your employee base. Um, and through the Canada Ontario Job Grant, uh, the provincial government through um, uh, the Employment Ontario Delivery System, uh, will help offset that cost uh, by a tremendous amount, actually, um, uh, in terms of upskilling your, your staff um, through certification. So uh, Christine can certainly speak more heavily uh, to that in terms of the process and applications as they go through. Um, uh, the other uh, piece I just wanted to jump on, just to backtrack in terms of uh, increasing technology uh, to Angela's uh, question. Uh, typically speaking, if you if you hop in and out of Innovate uh, Canada uh, on and off their website, you will see over the course of many, many years, uh, technology is something that they are, you know, very driven by. Uh, for those that have been around the block a long time, they used to do Urban Cap. That was a, a million years ago, and that was to make Canada the most connected country in the world at one point. Um, right now, there is a grant. It's just recently gone up. It certainly doesn't address fully, uh, Angela, what you're referring to. However, it is focused on ensuring those who have uh, disability are able to participate in the digital market. Um, and it is a, it looks like it's a, bit of, it's a cost share, haven't done all the research, cost share program. But what it will do is if you are looking at turning uh, part of your business um, into more uh, e-commerce, uh, you could look at that grant uh, to uh, share that cost in upgrading your technology. Um, and so it, it is, it's just another way to find a dollar for dollar match for you to get a bigger car, uh, so to speak, or a more efficient car. Um, but uh, uh, just something to take a peek at. And I'll, I'll turn the floor back over to Christine to uh, finish talking about college. Uh, thank you, Deanna. Um, yeah, so just some additional details on the, the Canada Ontario job grant. As Deanna mentioned, it is a, a grant that's available uh, where the, the government, the ministry pays two thirds of the, the training cost. Um, so if an employer is looking to um, either upscale a, a current employee that's within the, uh, the company, or if you're looking to hire someone with specific skills, um, you know, if they need some additional uh, training, um, but of course, is there a cost to that? Then, then the ministry can support two thirds of that that cost, um, and the maximum amount is is up to ten thousand uh, dollars per um, individual or person that's uh, going to be receiving the training. Um, the training does need to be delivered by an eligible third party trainer, um, and it, it is open to you know small businesses uh, like many of you that are here today. Um, so it could be you know just to train one individual, or it could be up to train you know eighty individuals. Um, so it's quite uh, open on on that uh, end. In order to uh, apply for for the program, uh, there is an online. Um, 
link or application that, that you can access and I can post that, that link in the chat for those that are interested. Um, and, and just to, to give you some insight, there is sort of, we have two streams or we have sort of, um, in terms of the delivery of, of reviewing the applications for eligibility. Um, and managing those those training agreements with employers. So we have the if there's less than 25 uh, employees or participants that are being uh, trained, those applications would actually go to one of our Employment Ontario service providers. Um, so like the Y, um, for example, so it would be depending on where you're located in the region um, and your application would be sent directly to that organization. If you're looking to train uh, 25 and more, then those applications would be coming directly to the ministry for for review and administration. Um, so that's uh, sort of it in a nutshell. I don't know if there's any specific questions, um, but a lot of information is on the, when you go through to the application process in terms of eligibility as an employer um, and what is some eligible uh, training or trainers in the community. But we do have a lot of um, employers that, that do various uh, training such as Lean Six Sigma, or it could be around financial planning, um, customer service. Um, some of those are some of the frequent ones that we see, health and safety as well as, as another one. Uh, oh, and just to, sorry, Mishka, um, just sorry, just to add to that too is <clears throat> it, when you get onto the college website, we have had a lot of employers who have said it's, it's a government website. Let's not lose sight of that. And I say that tongue in cheek a little bit as Christine is giggling. So, uh, you know, if, if it's, if it's cumbersome, it's overwhelming, it's because it is. Um, please reach out to uh, the website. Um, there's a link that says chat now. They can help to walk you through that process or call your local Employment Ontario organization and they can walk you through the process. Um, everything that we do is free and I need to really make that clear. Um, you don't need to hire somebody to help you navigate the COJ process. This is what we are paid to do um, and that is to support you as the employer at no cost to access those services. So I think it's just important to stress that. So. Now, I appreciate it, Deanna, and I can only second that and how helpful your teams have been actually in assisting people in moving this forward. Uh, one of the follow-up questions that have come in is the Canada Ontario Job Grant available uh, all throughout the year is, my uh, is one of the first questions that is coming in. And secondly, how quickly can people access it? And I don't know, Christine or Deanna, if either one of you wants to take it, but uh, I think it's a good follow-up question and would help our attendees. Um, yep, so in terms of the funding, it is available and open throughout the year. Um, so applications could come in at, at any time. Um, each of our organizations that are funded uh, through the Employment Ontario, uh, they do have a set budget that they're provided. However, if that budget is exhausted, then, um, you know, there is opportunity to look at other organizations who may not have, you know, may have budget available um, and sort of as well, there is opportunity, of course, to reach out to the ministry di directly seeking um, additional funding to support those applications. Um, and so recognizing now, especially in the um, environment or in the economic state that we are right now, the government is, you know, it is a priority in terms of the skills training and um, and supporting the, the employers in, in getting individuals who are, are trained and, and skilled in the workforce. So um, certainly uh, don't have hesitation in reaching out to the organizations and, and looking at uh, a potential application. Thank you very much. Um, there's and a question. Mishka, has, yes. Just more, so I, uh, that's one of the first referrals I do to startups or expanding companies to the Canada Ontario Job Grant. And I actually did a little search yesterday. One of the first things you did in your daily COVID uh, update email back on March 20th, you listed all of them in the Niagara region. So that's really helpful. And then I wanted to get back to Andrew's question. One other thing, I know we have mostly small businesses on here, but nonprofits, of course, there's a resource called TechSoup where you can get uh, uh, reduced uh, 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 software as well as hardware through them. Actually, that's, that's really helpful. Thank you very much, Volker. And um, I, uh, there's a question, um, and Christine and Diana, it kind of brings me back to what one of you have said, and this is coming from Lee Bastings with Happy Heads Tutoring. And she is asking, what kind of business grants or loans are available to people with disabilities? And I think, Diana, you mentioned uh, that there are some opportunities there, but I was wondering if either one of you can touch base on that. 
Um, I can start, Dana. So there is, um, we do have employment um, service providers. They're called employment assistance services providers who do uh, deal specifically with persons with disabilities. So they do have uh, funding from our ministry as well as other ministries to support um, individuals with, with disabilities. Um, so, and as well, so they are, that's sort of their specific client group, but all of our Employment Ontario organizations, um, you know, support all client groups. Um, so again, I think it was mentioned with, I think it was Nora, some at the beginning is sort of, you know, there's no sort of wrong door going into any of the Employment Ontario providers or um, any employment service agencies in the community would be able to sort of direct and, and support you in terms of where is the best organization to get the services you require. And I don't know, Deanna, if you have anything to add to that. Uh, just adding through the lens of uh, is the question uh, as you as the employer um, are looking uh, to upskill yourself, improve your knowledge base in terms of serving those um, who uh, may have a disability, uh, creating an, a barrier free environment. Um, so the context, I, I think, would help us answer that question a little bit better. Um, but whether it is those accessing your services needing resources as Christine has uh, alluded to there is multiple resources that you could be using, whether they're Employment Ontario's MLTSD or uh, other provincial uh, deliverer um, ministries. Uh, if you are the employer and you're looking, uh, same caveat, um, uh, but there could also be a means of accessing, uh, you know, the, the IT piece as we just talked about with Innovate, um, uh, Innovate Canada, so. Thank you very much. Um, so we focus a little bit on um, digital kind of uh, e-commerce aspects of your business and then other funding that is available to you. But one of the things uh, that often happens is that out of the recession, it has created actually often a high number of new entrepreneurs. In part of it, it might be driven because uh, there's a high number of people that are losing their job, but they still want to maintain and stay in the community and are looking at unique different ways of actually servicing that community. And often when we are seeing a significant market change, uh, there's a lot of people who see opportunities in it at the same time. So I thought maybe it's good for us and for those uh, attendees who are looking at a startup, who are brand new to it, to saying, what are some of the services that are available to them uh, to move it forward? And I'm sure that each one of your organizations has a number of them, but I thought maybe if we really go go down and just maybe Nora, if I can ask you to look at it and say like, what are some of the services that you're offering almost in making sure that they're set up right correctly and um, what are things that they can access through Innovate Niagara? Sure. Um, I, I agree. There's a lot of, we have a lot of um, kind of new companies coming, sprouting up, um, taking advantage how they can of um, this very tech environment right now you know and our clients who were tech-based have really not slowed down at all um, so i'd say that really our services um, haven't changed in that you're still looking at what's your business model um, how do you um, move forward in this environment uh, what's your market like and so one of the things we look at if someone comes and says okay i've got this new business idea we say, all right, well, who is going to buy it? Who's going to buy your product or service? And so the most important thing is understanding who your customer is going to be. And so you don't forge ahead and um, develop what you think is the perfect product or service. You really need to work with your customer and understand what they need. So, so this is all the same as it's always been. Um, and it's finding those people who are your customers and understanding and delivering things that, are, that they want because it doesn't matter if you have the best widget in the world, if people aren't gonna buy it, um, you're wasting your time and your money. So um, we like to help people understand, is there a market? So there's market intelligence services that we offer and um, it's very valuable and it's a free service that we can provide in understanding the market out there and who your competitors are and so that you can focus in on something um, that there's, there's a, a gap in the market and how you can address it. Um, so I, yeah, so, and, and um, so that's really where we're still focused with our, with our clients. 
And I think it's so critical, Noah, what you brought up is actually really accessing some market data. Just uh, because I think it's a great idea, you know, like I'm, I might not feel the same in six months down the road and others, um, and it's difficult for people to access market data and specific market data and being able to yeah. uh, utilize it. So because it sits in so many different areas, um, and so it's good to be able to go to one uh, company, to one organization, to actually being able to lead a young entrepreneur, a new ent entrepreneur yeah. uh, through that process. And, and I think the other thing to um, mindset to have is you don't have to come out with the perfect product. You know, you it's a it's a very iterative process and understanding and being able to um, show your product, get acceptance, find out what people need, and keep kind of building it. Um, is really important because you can spend a lot of time on trying to develop that perfect thing, but it, it, you really have to think about it as more iterative. Yeah, actually, that's an excellent point. Uh, and Rob, uh, St. Catherine's Enterprise deals with a tremendous amount of startups and has a number of programs to help them out. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're similar to uh, to Nora at Innovate and uh, uh, we work very closely with uh, with Innovate and Venture. Uh, probably there isn't a week that goes by where we don't uh, pass a referral back and forth in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, new businesses or startups or small existing small businesses trying to grow um, and and definitely I do expect to see uh, a little bit of an uptake if, uh, if whenever there's a bit of a downturn, people do evaluate their career options and, and sometimes people do investigate business ideas. And I encourage people to reach out to our offices to, to start to develop that business plan and to start on some market research. And I second everything Nora just said about understanding your customer why will they buy from you? That is so critically important. You know, we wake up excited with this great idea, but we have to figure out why will people buy from us? You know, they have all kinds of choices. They might satisfy that, that need or desire or want by buying somewhere else right now. Why would they switch to you? Or if nobody else is solving that problem or providing that service, is that a warning sign? you know that because nobody's thought of it before uh, or maybe it's a great opportunity so when people come to us we we talk about that research as well uh, we guide people through the different steps to getting started we strongly encourage developing a business plan and uh, and considering how much funding and what resources they need to put together um, in addition to you know all the rules and regulations and marketing plan and all those sorts of things as well so nor um mishka i'm not sure if i completely answered your question or if I went on a little tangent there. It's perfect, actually. <laughs> uh, it actually leads me so nicely into actually asking Volker the next question. So thank you. Because you mentioned, Rob, uh, the need for business plan. And I think both you and Nora talked about the thoughtfulness it's required um, in moving forward and ensuring a greater success rate in it. Um, Volker, when you have businesses coming to you, asking for grants, asking for loans, what are some of the things that you need from those businesses to ensure that you can move forward with them? Two screens, I mean the mouse on the other screen and then yes. Um, um, so in regards to the things we need, um, definitely very similar to if you go personally to a bank and would like to uh, or apply for a loan. So personal financials, right? If you're an existing business, uh, business uh, the, the financials for that. But if you start up, um, we would want to see a business plan and we want to see cash flow forecasts. And with the business plan and cash flow forecast, actually we work very, very closely with the enterprise centers, with Rob and Adrian and St. Catharines and Michael and Dean in, in Niagara Falls, because they have great services. I think Rob, you ran last night or yesterday, you had the business plan writing uh, uh, webinar, right? Um, so, and in the business plan, exactly. So uh, the you know, sales drive cash, what like Nora and Rob, Rob uh, mentioned, uh, we, we want to see, can you actually generate cash? Do you have clients to sell, for, uh, uh, to, to, sell to? And um, for us as a lender, we want to see skin in the game. A lot of people have great ideas, great uh, um, products which they want to sell, but they don't have anything 
to put towards it in, 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 in capital, right? So a lot of lenders, especially the banks, credit unions, they want to see that, and the BDC a lot of times too, they want to see that you have your own funds available to put into this. Um, I always also say that surround yourself with mentors. So maybe you have no idea how good sales will be, but reach out to the ecosystem, which we have here, like the enterprise centers, Innovate, even the, the, the cities and the Niagara Regional Economic Development Department, Spark Niagara, there are so many other things. Reach out to people who know and uh, give you the feedback uh, you, know, you need and uh, uh, have a little advisory services. And then for Spark Startups, there's good government resources, canada.ca backslash business or FET of Ontario has a small business services and Ontario on ontario.ca, there's open for business. Lots of resources, how you can start up uh, uh, um, a small business, but essentially have those papers ready and, and, and have a business plan, have cash flow forecasts and work on them continuously. Once you create them, don't put them in a drawer and never go back to them, right? So it's a living, breathing thing. Thank you so very much and I agree with you that a business plan is an ongoing one and if there ever is a time that we have all rewritten our business plans probably five times over, I think we all have been there and probably more than that over the last nine months, uh, eight or nine months of this year. Um, if Volker, a follow-up question that has come in, are there specific opportunities um, or that you offer for startups when it comes to business financing? Um, if someone is, has asked of 500,000, if they have an ask of 5,000, are they kind of like, can you give people an idea of are there limitations when coming to venture uh, on the ask that is there? And I actually, uh, if you unmute yourself. Someone unmuted. So um, we actually uh, provide term loans and lines of credits anywhere from $2,500 up to $250,000. We work with a lot of partners. We work uh, with Meridian, one of your partner, uh, a lot with other credit unions, banks. We ver work very closely with the BDC office in St. Catharines. And um, the ask, yes, a lot of people sometimes over budget, but uh, uh, that's, that's all right. So we help them finding the right budget for them within the, the uh, cash flow forecast they create and pr present to us. But especially for startups, we have... Um, what we call an express loan program, which is up to $10,000. If your credit history is uh, decent, if your plan makes sense, then um, it's mostly a um, unsecured loan, which, can, which has no uh, uh, application administration fee, is open to pay back right away. And that's a lot of uh, companies use that also to buy equipment, like we talked about technology before, maybe to upgrade, right? So, um, we, we always say, take sometimes baby steps. You don't have to always uh, look right away for the million dollar financing because you have to service that, right? And uh, um, unfortunately right now with all the COVID funding, nothing is there for startups really. Um, there's all to, you know, the, the uh, re regional relief and recovery. It's all a fund which we provide or facilitate for Niagara. It's all about relief and recovery, not for startups. So, but there hasn't been a lower interest rate, I think, that I know ever available right now for startups too. So uh, the, the, the climate right now from a financing st standpoint is really good for startups. That's very good. Volker, this question I think is maybe geared towards you too, or I'll direct it your way. It's coming mm -hmm. from uh, Tracy, one of our attendees, and uh, Tracy's asking, is the new $20,000 uh, CBA, the CBA loan, available only to businesses who utilize a non-commercial account? So, I'm more the expert in the RRRF, in the Regional Recovery uh, Relief and Recovery Fund, not in the CBA. Um, so I am not aware if they're only for non-commercial accounts. So what I know that, and on the 26th of, so what was it, on Monday or Tuesday, I think, Mishka, your, your daily email announced it, that you can now apply for the SIBA with also having a personal checking account or account as your business account. You have to open a business account. So there's always iterations and uh, new things. So I'm not 100% available there. I do can say about the, regional relief and recovery fund which is a program 
where small businesses, main street businesses have fallen through the cracks with the SIVA program, which I think right now is, the, is that they have to show that they have 40,000 in non-deferrable um, uh, costs, right, expenses. Then they can come to us. We've um, provided, I think, 66 loans of almost $2 million to small businesses in Niagara um, up until early September. That's when we ran out of our funds. But there was an announcement two weeks ago that we'll be replenished and we hope within the next two, three weeks or so we have more funds for that. And uh, just in, a, in a, a comparison, I think over the 35 years we've been around, we've given out about $25 million in repayable loans. And, uh, uh, and that's normally around 20 to 40 loans a, a year. And we've done 66 loans with 2 million in three months. So it is, the need is there. The need is definitely there. And you mentioned before the changes in the, in the um, rent relief. That is a awesome news for small businesses because we have a lot of small retail uh, um, uh, one entrepreneur kind of businesses which are really, really suffering under that and those programs will help. Yeah. Um, Rob, that, it's really helpful, Volker. And thank you very much for actually referencing your regional uh, relief and recover uh, fund as well. I think it's something that people are inquiring about. Rob, did you want to talk to it's Tracy's question or I can also address it, but Rob, to you. I, um, I was just going to, I put my, my, my finger up for a second because I, I, th I think the $20,000, um, th the question with respect to the, uh, uh, is is it just for people with a personal bank account? Uh, I believe it's just it's just been amended so that if a business owner was operating with a personal account, uh, they would be eligible. Uh, but that doesn't mean that people. It's preferred if you have a business account, but now you can apply if you're operating your business through a personal banking checking account. And I I see a couple of people nodding with me, so I hope that I believe that's correct. It is, it is, I, I, yeah, yes. correct. What do you say, uh, Nora? Over to you. I was just going to say, I think there were two different announcements that maybe those are like the 20,000 was one announcement where it, before it was 40 and now it's 60,000 is the SIBA loan that you can. Um, so if you already got the 40, you can add another 20. Um, and then the personal one was a separate announcement. So I think it's two different kind of amendments to the original SIBA. Yeah. So right. you don't need, uh, Tracy, to your question that you had asked, uh, it's available to businesses who have a commercial account. So if you have an existing business account, you can apply, if you've already applied for the 40,000, you can apply for the 20,000 as well. And we hope that this uh, answered your question. Um, I want to turn the conversation back to Deanna and Christine uh, for a second. And um, one of the things uh, that a lot of employers are needing right now is actually apprentices. Uh, and it has been sometimes a really bit of a, of a challenge. And I was wondering um, how your services actually support employers that are in need of uh, bringing on apprentices uh, or offering some of the things uh, that are really critical for a business to be successful. And Deanna, if I maybe can ask you first or Christine, either one, um, to maybe look at that topic too. Uh, so, sure. Oh, go ahead, Christine. You want to talk about the first process? Um, no, you can go ahead. You can go okay. ahead and I'll fill in if there's anything else. Perfect. Um, so we don't uh, do the registration that will be, uh, Christine will talk a little bit about that. <clears throat> Through our natural work with employers um, and with the job seekers, um, uh, we will uh, fill the gap, do the job match that's required. Um, we help them with the process, which Christine will talk about because that's the more official process uh, is on her end in the testing and whatnot. Um, through Employment Ontario, we can help with the funding in terms of um, hiring incentive if that were to be part of the process um, and or the um, apprenticeship bonuses, uh, payout bonuses that can happen throughout in the education grants. Um, we, uh, uh, Mishka, to your point, uh, it has been a very busy apprenticeship year, surprisingly, uh, more so actually than it has been in almost every year previously in the last five, at least for our, our Y already. Um, uh, we have one staff member who I think has done uh, 16 this year. 
um, or worked on 16. Some are still on hold, uh, pending what happens with COVID, but it's been a very busy year. So for those that are seeking apprenticeships, we encourage them to go into their local Employment Ontario office to start talking with an employment coach. And for those employers who are looking to add to their apprenticeship uh, portfolio, uh, portfolio uh, again, reach out to their local Employment Ontario office. This is what we, we help do. We help navigate that process through the ministry funding well as help them find um, an employee who will meet um, their needs as an employer. So, you know, when we think about it in terms of, I need an electrician, um, well, that's great. You know that you want the person with the skill set. But the other caveat to that is, is I also need somebody who fits my business. Um, you know, they're going to be part of a team. They can fit into our environment nicely. And those are the things that Employment Ontario providers can help you with. It's not just the guy on the paper. It's really having the discussion to ensure that that investment that's about to be made into an apprentice, which is quite heavy, we, we all know that, um, is one that will produce long-term uh, sustainable results for both the worker and the employer. Thank you very much. And uh, Christine, would you like to add uh, anything to the dialogue? Yeah, so just to add to that, as Deanna mentioned, the, um, the application process to actually register an apprentice, um, if you're the employer registering an apprentice, then those applications are done online uh, now. Uh, so the apprenticeship apply online uh, link, again, I can um, add that to, to the chat and it is an online process where you're entering the, the information and those applications come through to one of our employment and training consultants in one of the local offices, depending on where you're uh, located. And um, the ministry will then work with you as the employer um, and the apprentice to, to begin the apprenticeship program. Um, most trades um, are delivered, you know, locally. So Niagara College will in Niagara would have a suite of um, apprenticeship trades that they deliver the skills training for. That's funded through the ministry. Um, and then we have also Mohawk College or Conestoga College or some of the other uh, local um, colleges that provide training. There's also some local unions as well who um, uh, provide training and. Um, for on behalf of the the ministry so the the application process is online um and i'm um, glad that we sort of looped into the apprenticeship it is another priority for the ministry and for the government and, and the skilled trades and um so a lot of focus right now on the, on the ministry and the government and looking at the apprenticeship system as a whole and digitalizing a lot of our, our services and information for for employers and for job seekers as well so um, you know, if you visit our, our the ministry's landing page, there is a lot of information there and um, around the apprenticeship and the different incentives and grants that are available, whether they're provincial uh, or federal grants, um, as well as uh, Deanna mentioned, there are some hiring bonuses available as well through the Employment Ontario service providers. Thank you so very much. I think uh, the apprenticeship program is so critical to so many industries and sectors in their overall success. So thank you for everything actually that uh, your organizations are doing. Um, and while we're talking about uh, a little bit about sector and sector specific, Holka, I was wondering if you can uh, expand a little bit on the community economic development initiatives uh, that are happening through Venture Niagara, uh, because some of them are quite uh, focused on certain um, sectors as well. And I thought maybe it's good for people to understand uh, what is available there. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Mishka, again. Um, so most of them are uh, related to tourism. Um, so we have uh, our community economic development officer here, Susan Morin, you mo most of you will uh, know her. She runs the, the Niagara Tourism Network uh, group, I think once, once a month on a Thursday. Now it's all uh, digital just like this, but normally they would go to different uh, locations and just similar to what the, the, the business after five are the you run it's uh, the Niagara Tourism Network brings tourism entities together anywhere from a photographer to a hotel, b bs wineries, right? And uh, to exchange what services they have, what, what uh, they're looking for to partner with. That's one side, uh, one part. Then um, we've uh, initiated the Cycling Niagara uh, website and um, the little map. Uh, there's actually a fourth edition coming out next year. And that's to, to boost cycling tourism in Niagara. And I think uh, in Niagara-on-the-Lake, we've seen that this year, 
who've been out there. I think that was one of the industries, the cycling tours, wine tours have like boomed, right? And we get, we, uh, prior to COVID, we got requests from China, from Europe for cycling tours to come here, cycling bus tours to come here. And uh, then we do a lot of Francophone related uh, uh, projects. We have, uh, we are part of the French, uh, French interagency group. Um, Sue is part as the chair of the Francophone Services for Canada Games. So we're involved there. We've started a website years ago called Bourgeau Niagara, but uh, that has now a repository, a repository of, um, of French uh, businesses, small businesses, and uh, who are not, you know, looking out to also work with, with uh, Anglophone uh, comp uh, companies. And uh, we run the Thoral Tourism. So during the summer, we actually um, run the uh, Lock 7 Museum for Thorold and uh, during the um, um, redo of, of uh, Front Street when it was all ripped up, new, new uh, uh, services put in, uh, we helped the BIA there with help also from the Niagara region to say we're still open for business. So those are some of the community economic development initiatives and actually Going back to the uh, Regional Relief and Recovery Fund, there is some more targeted things coming. So um, not only for, you know, uh, 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 there was one for women I wanted to mention. So there is, you know, uh, uh, other programs um, like the RE3, there was a Rebuild, Reopen, Revive, women-led SMEs, uh, uh, but that's all fulfilled. And then Nike on the Lake at the tourism RRF program, but there's new things coming for the Francophone businesses, black entrepreneurs, indigenous entrepreneurs, and things like that. So we're um, in contact with FETF Ontario and uh, see then that we can reach out through the connections we made through the different community economic development projects that we can roll those programs out. It's really helpful for us to understand actually the vast offerings that each one of your organizations uh, is offering and how uh, you can actually help uh, help individuals that here. So thank you very much. And Volker, um, I agree that I think when it comes to recreation, if it's bicycling or anything else, uh, it had really throughout the summer was one of those industries that was actually booming. Uh, yeah. And uh, it was hard for people to find the bikes that they wanted, the small <laughs> boats that they were looking for and other things like that, not to talk about uh, the pool that they wanted to have in their backyard. So um, it's, uh, I think it's good for us to sometimes remember too, well, although everything is quite difficult and so many for so many sectors, there are some sectors that are also growing and expanding and where people are looking at their lifestyle slightly differently than they have beforehand. Oh, exactly. I think if you, if you uh, want to start up a small business right now, Cross-country skis. Okay, so to all the attendees, <laughs> there's the idea. And Bob and Nora, you will have a couple of people coming forward with strategic plans on this. But I think you're absolutely right. I think it's those kind of businesses that are that are making a difference. Um, I wanted to follow up, and Deanna, I know that you've answered Tracy's question, but I think this question was a good one that I thought is maybe worthwhile mentioning. And that was a question coming back to the Canada Ontario Job Grant. And in this particular case, uh, uh, Tracy asked uh, if they must have WSIB coverage, um, but her specific business is exempt on it, uh, but can they still apply? Uh, Deanna, do you mind? It's probably a question that quite a few of our attendees have. Uh, can, you, um, can you give us some input in that? Uh, sure. So there are businesses who are WSIB exempt. Um, anything that we do with Employment Ontario funding, whether it's through COGE, uh, a, a federal government funding will be the same. What they're asking is, do you have proper level of insurance uh, to support your employees? Um, and so it's all part of our due diligence to ensure that we are supporting registered, uh, properly standardized businesses. So uh, the YMCA, for example, based on its status as a charity, is WSIB exempt. However, that does not negate our responsibility uh, to our so we have to have uh, the equivalent to uh, WSIB and third party uh, level insurance, uh, amongst other things. So we would have to, you would have to show us, um, you'd have to, sorry, you would have to provide us with uh, the documentation so that that would go within the COG application. 
Very good. Thank you. I appreciate that clarification and I think so do our other attendees that are here. Um, we talked a lot about business plans, we talked about strategic plans that are there, um, but I think much of the success in some of those lies on the success on how well it is written. And I know that some of your organization are assisting people in uh, writing um, and when it comes to applications, when it comes to websites, when it comes to strategic plans. And it's always something that uh, I think is, is important. And I wondered, uh, Nora, Rob, and, and maybe Volker, if you can touch on it. Nora, if I could ask you. Sure. Um, um, I can talk a little bit about, there's like three different things I see in there. So one is if you're, um, submitting applications for grants or funding or pitching to investors. I'd say the biggest thing is to look at really read the question and look at what they're looking for. And in the um, in the description of the particular program, what are the key things that they're looking for and make sure that you specifically address how you're going to um, how you meet those criteria. Uh, I think it's simple, but it's just like keep going back to their question and make sure you are answering the question specifically. Uh, don't exaggerate or be overly optimistic. It needs to be realistic. You know, like you, if you have a, a brand new phone idea, you're not going to take over 10% of the iPhone market in three years. So don't put that in your application. Um, and also look at the program that you're applying to and make sure it is the right fit. Don't just um, be throwing your name in for, for any opportunity because it doesn't help you if you get um, even funding for something that isn't in your core, um, your core mandate or, or what you want to accomplish because it really won't help you in, in the long term. Um, and as far as like part of that is uh, your business plan and model one thing that we really work with with our clients is called the business model canvas and especially when you're first laying out your business it's a really concise um, flexible way to uh, to conceptualize what your your um, business is going to achieve um, and i know rob uses it as well and um, um, and again you know your strategic Right now, everything is changing, um, but your strategic priorities and how you're going to address new markets, new customers, that's still really important. I appreciate that. Um, we've had so many communications, so many conversations with so many businesses uh, on them adjusting their strategic plan, adjusting this, and often it actually didn't need as much adjusting as what they actually thought it to be because the core of some of their services were the same, it was the delivery that changed and maybe the customer outreach or market that changed, but not the essence that was there. Uh, Rob, on the same topic, um, what are some of maybe the services that uh, St. Catherine's Enterprise offers? Sure thing. Yeah, absolutely. And and we too, uh, we do stress the importance of a of a business plan, as uh, as as Nora was talking about, and often do start with uh, with the the business model canvas as a uh, uh, as a way to communicate an idea and uh, start to think through an idea uh, while it's still at that idea phase. Uh, but even uh, as businesses grow, quite often we get referrals from from places like Venture Niagara or the or Meridian Credit Union or other financial institutions uh, from people saying uh, um, they're applying for a loan with the local financial institution and they're asked for a business plan and don't know where to start. So we offer uh, guidance on developing that business plan and we really encourage people to do uh, some form of business plan. It doesn't need to be a hundred page document uh, but a short concise write up um, so that you have goals so that you uh, think about your market research that's required so that you have an actual marketing plan ahead of time. Um, and then you can set benchmarks to all of those things and you can learn and grow and develop over time and maybe every quarter pull out your business plan to say, you know, am I hitting my goals? Are my finances still on track or do I need to adjust my cash flow or, or adjust my finances based on my cash flow? Uh, what's working in my marketing plan? So we really encourage uh, all of our clients to do some form of business plan. 
um, uh, quite often people get the template and they dive in and, and, uh, uh, and feel a little overwhelmed. So that's why we really stress keeping it short and concise. Because frankly, even when you hand it into a financial institution, they'd rather read a, a well-written, concise 10 or 15 page business plan than a 100 page rambling business plan uh, that's, that you spent 200 hours on and only for somebody to not want to read. Um, so that, that's one thing we really stress. Um, with respect to the funding, that's probably the number one question we get is where is the money? So we, we coach people through, hey, you need a little bit of personal savings. Uh, you potentially need some love money. You know, somebody loves you enough to give you some money to start a business. Uh, you potentially need a loan. Uh, and then there might be some government support. And, and I really want to step on my soapbox for one brief second here on, on government support and programs. Uh, Deanna and Volker and I think Nora have all mentioned the Government of Canada website. Um, be sure that when you're searching online for government grants that you're at an actual government website. Um, I see too many people pay seven, eight hundred dollars for information that's available for free on Canada.ca, and that information just points you to come talk to me or to Volker or to Nora, and we can give you the information for free instead of you paying seven or eight hundred dollars. Uh, the same with uh, uh, organizations. There are some organizations that. Um, offer to help with a business plan and maybe you pay three four thousand dollars for it start with doing it yourself and get some guidance from from one of our offices here um, i just see too many people spend money uh, chasing money that they don't need to spend so i'll get off my soapbox there uh, but i did want to take a second to uh, to mention that uh, yeah, so beyond that, we, we meet with 600 uh, aspiring business owners each year, and we see about 100 get started each year, and the others uh, go back to employment or, uh, or choose other career paths. So, uh, but there's no wrong door. Reach out to anybody on this call. We all refer to each other regularly, and uh, we all have the common goal of seeing the bus the, our business community succeed. We're not competing with each other. There's lots of work to go around. We're very cooperative with each other. And uh, so I really encourage anybody with questions about business to reach out. I, I, I think I saw in the chat, you know, is there a one-stop shop? Um, uh, I would say the Enterprise Center is maybe a first stop, but we can't do the registrations for you with Canada Revenue Agency or WSIB, or we can't apply to the bank on your behalf, but we're certainly a good first stop. But I would say anybody on this call is a good first stop uh, and, and we'll help coach you through who to talk to next. Yeah. And, and I, I, sorry, I would, yeah, I would just throw in that, um, what uh, kind of our approach to is that we're gonna help you, but we're gonna give you homework um, you know, because it's your business and you need to drive it. So that's the expectation you should come in with that you're going to get some advice, but this is your ball to, to carry and run with. And, and the more homework you do, the more services you'll be able to access and that sort of thing. Yeah, I agree. And coming back to the uh, question that actually uh, Rob addressed that was from Leslie Harper, is there a one-stop uh, shop? One of the things I have found is that uh, the needs are so specific. So if you call anyone on this panel, just call any one of them, there is so much collaboration among all of our organizations that the needs might be slightly different and we will redirect you just because one phone call was one email to the right uh, place that you need to go because maybe your needs are more leaning towards grants or funding and other things, maybe more towards strategic planning, maybe more towards digital media, other areas that are there. So we encourage everyone, uh, everyone here, um, if, we, if it is confusing because there's five or six of us here, just give us one call and we redirect you. It's, uh, it's really going to be just two minutes of your time from that end. Um, and to add to that, Mishka, if I, if I may, um, it would be nothing if you reached out to Rob and you said, I need to speak with Deanna, Nora, and you, and we put a Zoom call on. Uh, the good news is you know, we've learned in times of COVID, we actually don't have to get into a car to talk to people. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've probably learned that at nauseum. I'm not going to lie. Um, there are days I go to bed looking like this. <laughs> Um, so uh, honestly, um, reach out. Uh, you're right. As a small business, your time is precious. It needs to be invested in making money. 
And so if we can make that easier by putting three of us on a Zoom call and you're having a conversation, it takes 30 minutes, then yeah, let's do what we can do to make that uh, time impactful for you. Yeah, Diana, I really appreciate your suggestion. You're right. We're just a phone call away, just an email away uh, to assist you. I think every organization here is committed to the, the success of businesses and entrepreneurs in Niagara, any size of business that's there. So just tap into that. I'm conscious of the time that we have because it's just flying actually on this note. And we have about five minutes left and five panelists. And I usually give uh, each panelist about a minute for closing remarks at the end. And I think it's maybe good uh, because maybe we haven't gotten to some of the services or some of the things that are upcoming in your organization that you would like to mention and that might be really uh, helpful for the participants in today's, uh, in, uh, today's webinar. And um, maybe, Christine, if I can start out with you um, and, and uh, start there to saying anything uh, that's really relevant uh, to uh, small businesses um, and uh, each one of you has about a minute. Christine? Great, thank, yes, thank you, Mishka, and uh, thanks again for having me today. Um, I, just a few things I'll wrap up with is just sort of, um, you know, on behalf of the ministry and, and sort of our, our messaging to employers and, um, you know, recognizing with the COVID impacts to, to small businesses specifically, um, it is a priority and um, a focus of the government. And um, as a service delivery manager in the Niagara region, um, you know, over the next few months, um, looking at working with organizations like the YMCA um, or the Chamber of Commerce and, and building some partnerships and looking at, you know, what are the, the needs of the employers and looking at some of our other programs or projects um, of funding that might be available to, to address some of those needs. Um, so, you know, keeping in touch with uh, those on the call today on the panel and because, um, you know, they're, they're usually a partner at these tables um, and usually well informed of what is happening in the community. And so there is, you know, a great focus on uh, whether it's doing research or, or developing tools and resources to, to, to support uh, small businesses around employment and training as well as on the um, health and safety employment standards uh, side of our ministry. So thanks again for for having me. Um, if you do have any questions, um, you know, certainly reach reach out to me as well and uh, happy to, as others have mentioned, connect and um, be part of some conversations to support you and your businesses. So thanks again. Thank you for being with us today. And uh, just a heads up to attendees, we are sharing everyone's content information too. Rob, over to you. Sure thing. Uh, like I've mentioned, uh, we're a, a great first place to uh, to visit for information on uh, on a variety of things. Uh, there's no wrong door. I, I I really can't state that enough. We're all here in cooperation and support of the small business community. Uh, one of the things that that I didn't really mention too much is that we every just about every month of the year uh, we run a series of uh, webinars or seminars when we're, if we're ever back in person again, but webinars um, on steps to starting a business on developing your business idea or exploring your business idea, market research, developing your marketing plan, developing your business plan and financial forecast. So these are all bite-sized one hour, though I just listed off five one hour webinars that we run. Um, one of them's an hour and a half, uh, just to give uh, enough time to cover the topic, but they're bite-sized introductions to each of those topics to get a, a new small business owner moving on the right path and uh, uh, exploring the idea before they quit their job or before they take out a big loan and getting them on that path. So I did want to mention that that's a key uh, uh, a key offering that we have every single month uh, through COVID, we've also explored uh, different webinars where we've brought in, similar to uh, the great programming offered by the Chamber of Commerce, we've uh, brought in webinars on things like HR during COVID, on dealing with fear and anxiety during COVID, reviews of the different government programs, et cetera, et cetera. So we try to listen to what our business community needs um, and put on different programming to support that. Um, and Mishka and the Chamber of Commerce, I wanted to say thanks very much to the Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce for pulling us all together today. It's been, uh, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you, Rob, for being with us too. And uh, the St. Catharines Enterprise Center puts an amazing list of wonderful webinars on very, uh, very timely too. Um, and I think that is critical at this point as people are making so many decisions so rapidly too. Nora, over to you. 
Thank you. Um, so we, uh, I just wanted to mention that we do also do some webinars and, and um, I know there's lots of things competing for everybody's time. Um, and so we try to do stuff that's, that's a little different and, uh, and I know as everyone does. Um, so we have a couple things coming up. One is um, a workshop on November 12th, or sorry, a webinar on um, uh, your homepage and writing words on your website. We have our traditional uh, mashup that we run three times a year, uh, which is usually about 100 people come out for a tech uh, networking event. So we're going to try doing it um, virtually, and that's um, November 24th. But I encourage people to sign up on our website for our newsletter. It comes out once a month um, with things that are going on. And if you are interested in meeting with us, you can um, go on our website and there's a become a client link. And uh, we'll set up a call within a couple of days and see how we can help you um, or connect you or, or what the best um, um, services we can provide for you. And um, yeah, it, this was great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And Falkro? Yeah, I think there's two things I want to say. Definitely, we all, it's a great ecosystem where we all work under and um, some of the things which um, Rob points out, some pitfalls or some things to stay away from, like he said, that that six, seven, eight hundred dollar uh, um, you pay to get some information which is readily available. It was always an anecdote. I mentioned it in a lot of my seminars, which I give, but I actually experienced it last year where someone in a panic called us and uh, they couldn't get their money back. And the other thing is too, I think for startups as well as for uh, small businesses eh, right now in the COVID environment, impacted uh, environment, it's uh, don't use your credit cards. Don't go for short-term lenders, right? Uh, stay away from high interest, um, short-term things like payday or um, online cash flow lenders. Reach out to your bank, to your, uh, um, your credit union or us uh, or the BDC. There is some programs available. Um, um, and um, yeah, like the, the, the RRRF, which I mentioned earlier, we will get more funding. So if you're a small business which didn't receive any um, SIBA funds, or doesn't qualify for that or any other uh, uh, federal business related uh, um, relief and recovery payments, they, they can come to us and we'll take a look at. And if that doesn't fit, we can always look at, like I mentioned, our express loan and hopefully be uh, able to help them. And thanks so much. Thank you so very much, Falka, too. And Deanna, last words. Uh, <clears throat> thanks for, for, for hosting uh, this, Mishka. I, I always get a great deal out of this uh, when I listen to our other providers and our other panelists uh, speak. It helps me go back and, and share. Um, in terms of small businesses, which is, is the, the platform for today, um, you know, uh, one of the things that we, we like to stress is that Employment Ontario is more than finding employees for employers and finding employers for job seekers. Um, uh, when we think about it in terms of small businesses, you know, the government funded organizations are open to employers and we encourage them to use them. We have helped small businesses with their onboarding um, because we know it's very time consuming. So we've run them through their health and safety training. AODA training, um, all the other uh, uh, things that one, you know, must have uh, based on ESA standards. Um, so we've helped small employers do that. We've helped them um, navigate uh, filling really hard to fill positions, um, think creatively. Uh, we've opened our doors to home-based businesses who want to meet with individuals to build their business, but don't want to do that within their home. So we've opened our doors to have private one-on-one -on -one space, they can, they can go ahead and do that. Um, most, I, I think most folks in our community think of Employment Ontario or employment services, and they think about job seekers. And today, I hope that you walk away knowing that Employment Ontario isn't just for the job seeker, it is for the employer. Um, our goal in Employment Ontario, as I'm sure Christine will talk about as she wraps up, is having impact in our community. It's about economic development, um, it is about making sure Niagara is a strong, thriving place to, you know, to use the hallmark, uh, you know, uh, live, work and play 
uh, that's what this is about. And so as a small business, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we will, we're happy to work with you um, and uh, help you thrive. Perfect. Thank you uh, to all of you for being with us this morning. We really uh, deeply appreciated the dialogue uh, that we've had. On a personal note, I have to say it's nice to see all of you on, uh, as being part of the panel um, to the attendees. Uh, the five of us or six of us uh, quite regularly interact. Uh, I think there's not a week that doesn't go by where we actually call each other or trying to redirect uh, some businesses um, to one or the other. So it's really nice uh, to be here and uh, to be able to come together this morning. Our appreciation also goes to MNP, accounting, tax and business consulting firm for sponsoring this webinar and above all to Meridian Credit Union for partnering with us throughout the small business months. Uh, today's webinar will be available on our website at gncc.ca. It will be shared with all the attendees and it will be made available through our social media channels as, as well. We've spoken a lot about uh, resources, subsidies and information and that will be emailed to you directly um, and as well will be made available with this webinar. So thank you very much uh, for being with us. Uh, thank you to all of you who are running a small business. Uh, you're making a tremendous difference to our community and you have all of our support. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks Mishka.